Yes, yeah, so where we were at, which I was telling you about uh, Robert Greene. Right. That, uh, you know, big author. Um, oh, I went, that's right. You saw him. Yeah, I went to go see him in L.A. Mm -hmm. I the was, Laws of Attraction, right? The, the, guy the Art of Seduction. The Art of Seduction, that's right. And the 48 Laws of Power. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw him uh, live lecture. Um, I got to meet him. He signed the Art of Seduction, the book. Nice. Yeah, I got to meet him and I asked him a question and I got to talk to him for like a minute. Yeah, you like, he engaged yeah. you. He engaged with me. Yeah, we're talking for a good minute. It was, it was fucking incredible. That's cool, man. And uh, I asked him, I was like, who's uh, one of the greatest seducers in history? You 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 yeah. prepared that question. Yeah, well, I was you? thinking about it because <laughs> because the book the book goes over like all the greatest seducers of all time, mm -hmm. and uh, I was thinking I was like, who like what does he think of like the greatest seducer like the kind of the most charismatic man you know? Yeah, and he said Errol Flynn, who was a pretty big Hollywood a uh, actor back in mm -hmm. the golden age. Um, but you know, talking about what we're talking I he was about, I'm gonna say Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer is just like a fucking burnt down angel fucking loser. Burnt down seducer. That's all he is. <laughs> For me, I've never bought that like like stuff, you know. Like he's just like a he has no wings, he's ugly, no wing. He's just fucked up, you know. <laughs> he's just bald. Yeah, he's like, yeah, so I'm saying it's yeah. like that's you know what I'm so saying? Funny. Like I'm not like I, I'm a man, you know, I'm God's creation. Like yeah. I, I'm just like that's just whatever to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's funny because there's this uh there's this uh, Latin American like writer. Mm -hmm. He describes the the devil, and it's just like it's like Satan. Satan is an old bold guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's just repressed and yeah, resentful. Don't bring up that shit right now. Like I'm more afraid. Like, who cares about this Satan guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm more afraid of the fucking you know some dork on the street. You know, I'm more afraid of those yeah. guys, you know, because yeah. they're, they're filled with anger. You Satan's know? is an old, bold guy. Basically, yeah. <laughs> burned out. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, just fucking smack his ass around, you know, right. it's whatever. We'll, we'll know his tricks. It's like, yeah. it's just like, come on, bro. It's old. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> old news. but he has this great quote of Robert Greene. Um, he says, uh, this is in one of his books, The Laws of Human Nature. And he goes, people have become more obvious and forthright, not out of some deep moral calling, but out of an increasing self-absorption and overall laziness. It requires no effort to simply be oneself or to blast one's message. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what we're talking about when it comes to the kind of culture of art and you know, comparing the classical art compared to like cinema mm -hmm. and um you know it's it's interesting just how much significance is behind films mm -hmm. and like you know how much um i think what it is is like for me like i'm you a think it's just oversaturated with bad like movies huh that's probably the main factor and it, it like it really upsets you yeah i think what it is is just like i think over the past five years or so I think once you're more in touch with the feminine or maybe some kind of like deeper quality of something of like your life, um, a lot of that entertainment is like a distraction. You know what I mean? And uh, it kind of depends on your, your tolerance, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm done to watch a movie on a Friday night, like whatever, but watching a movie Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's like, okay, man, this is like way too much cinema or way too much media. Like streaming services. Is yeah. Like, like oversaturating the amount of like content. Because what watch. it is, is your brain has like these brain waves. Mm -hmm. And like, so like television as well. I mean, I mean, you can read any book, Huxley, Orwell, all these guys were very much aware of technology yeah. and its power. And that's kind of like a main, you know, self-help yeah. fucking talking point. Well, I mean, we it's, to, we are that is the revolution that we live in. Right. It's a technological like revolution. Right. And and everything's and it's, great I think about it. It's a it. phase yeah. until we really tame it down and like use it in the in the right amount of doses, you know. Right. 
Because you know the what it is? of uh, technology right now is like so oversaturated that everybody's just like choking on it. Well, and they like, like, it's like it. A, it's like a mental, like uh, an indigestion. But they like it though. That's the problem. I mean, if you're a little like, bit more aware of it, like, you're kind of like, man, like, I'm, I, I don't want to watch another movie. We just watched like four in a row. Yeah. Like this is yeah. getting kind of fucking sick. Yeah. You it's guys. Like someone like eating you know, McDonald's every day. Yeah. It's like, bro, like, but I, I think what it is, you can compare it to like gym, gym culture, which is like these people talk about the gym. They talk about health and bullshit. It's because they have no personality. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. they, so they embody this kind of like easy, cheaper virtue to kind of go, Oh, look at what I did today. And it's like, okay, but like, What's your personality like? Are you humorous? Are you funny? You have anything? You have right. anything interesting to say? Mm-hmm. I mean, some of them are. Kind of like, no, 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 for sure. But well, I'm saying, for like, the most part, for the most part, boring. it's like it's like the reason why oh, you're, gonna, you're gonna get a lot of hate. Oh, for sure, heads. for sure, I always do. <laughs> but but the thing is, I'm not. What the fuck you mean, bro? I'm trying to help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, but there's this guy on Instagram. Is he has this page called Poetic Outlaws? Yeah, I hate gyms, by the way. Yeah, I know, right? Like, I know you go to the gym and all, but I know you hate it too. <laughs> oh, well, I, I like going there for like, the thing about it though, it's like the, the Greeks, when they would exercise, they would do it out of philosophy. There was something behind it. You yeah. Know what I'm so that's what I like about it, like the philosophy behind it. Um, but what I'm getting at is like, it, it's easy to take on these power control icons and then adapt it to yourself. Because it's there's it's kind of like what this quote says. It's not out of a deep moral calling. Mm-hmm. It's out of self-absorption and laziness, really. And uh, it's like a guy wearing a Ro- Rolex. A Rolex, yeah. It's like Rolex did all the prestige for you. You didn't do any of the prestige. You right. just took Rolex and just stole it. You know what I mean? Or bought it. Or, or you bought it. But I'm saying like you're not actually like Rolex the 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 company itself, they're making the watches. They're, yeah, they have the You prestige. like the idea. You like the and idea. You, you buy it. You buy it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, under, I understand that. So it's kind of like culture has become, I mean, this has been going on for 100 yeah, years. Yeah, but that's just consumerism. You know, no, but I'm saying like just, it, of, it's, it's just well, luxury. I'm saying like, what's the idealism behind it? It's always the same. <laughs> it's always like um, the talentless and the kind of um, self-absorbed, like they don't, they don't have anything that's personally interesting about themselves. Mm-hmm. So they kind of either become, you know, activists where they're throwing soups at Van Gogh's. I know. Or they're like watching too much movies because they have nothing better to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's I, that's, embarrassing. And, and, and that's kind of what I no- noticed the past five years. I was just like, why is everyone talking about movies all the time? Are they like, is there nothing else to talk about? Like, what's going on here, you know? Right. Yeah. And it's just over the years, you're just kind of magnified, magnified, yeah. magnified. And I wonder if, like, that's always the way it's been since the 50s. Yep. If it's always been that way, where, like, Hollywood has always been, like, very glamorized. And so people themselves don't have any glamour. So they just kind of go to Hollywood. Like, they, they mm-hmm. idolize these things. Right. But, I mean, the 50s, obviously... That shit is not the same anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because of technology, everybody lives like in a very like um, self-absorbing like mindset. Right. Where it's just like, you know, like the selfie time. Right. And it's it is like if someone from the fifties travels in time to like 2024 they'll be like what the fuck's going on (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean like what the fuck is this shit all about but right now like I feel like we live in a time where everybody like has a voice they have the right to say whatever they want right you know what I mean they can they hardly like uh, you know like read history or inform themselves of like why things are like this now did you see and the did, did you see the, a lot of stupidity you know yeah did, did you see uh cat williams on joe rogan 
like recently? Yeah, he he was just on Joe Rogan. Oh no, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, but that motherfucker is like on another level, bro. Right. So like, I watched a little bit of it. Um, he's always on on some next level <sighs> shit. Right. Obviously, he's Cat like Williams. A, obviously he's a great comedian. Um, but he's also like he he's a good like philosopher a, yeah, a, yeah a great thinker and uh he was on joe rogan and like they were talking about you know basic ancient astronaut theorists hypothesis which is basically like you know the ancient world was filled with aliens or whatnot um and it's such an interesting conversation because i think when i was younger i was like pr- i was very obsessed with that kind of um knowledge and now it's becoming even more popular than when I was younger. I felt like I was a little bit sh- uh, uh, strange about it because I was interested in like ancient, the ancient world. And then today, now it's like a very big mm-hmm. talking point. Um, and obviously, there was, it was becoming mainstream overall. And even back in the 80s and 70s, there was a lot of big books about it. It's always been popular. And uh, archaeologists and um, tons of different, you know, individuals and authors are very much obsessed in the same way. Like Manuel P. Hall, you know, Manuel P. Hall uh, was a occultic, mystic kind of author. He was a Freemason as well, and he would write tons of books about this shit. Yeah, uh, he has this book called "The Secret Order of America," "The Destiny of America," mm-hmm. some something like that. And he talks about like the kind of um, manifest destiny of America and kind of like the purpose of America and where it's going. It's a very crazy book. Yeah. Um, uh, But uh, he would always write about the ancients. And what's a great quote of his is um, the modern world has a million secrets, but the ancient world had one. Mm. Right. And, uh, you know, Cat Williams was on Joe Rogan talking about this kind of ancient mm-hmm. knowledge and, you know, thought, the Egyptian God teaching man writing and wisdom. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of like podcasting as well as movies. They're creating a kind of like super, supernatural cultural upstanding mm-hmm. where it's like now we're kind of beyond the stratosphere a little bit yeah i think it's <clears throat> like everything's very the, the, the internet i don't know sometimes i feel like it might be the second coming of jesus yeah and we don't even notice it you know and it's also like this, the, uh, this, you know this what platform one guy wrote a book about that really? about how electricity was the second coming of the holy ghost oh no electricity was the holy ghost right yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah. like for example like when you read the bible in the old testament like elijah uh he basically disappeared into a fire like uh, a carriage right mm-hmm. and all the israelis were like oh my god like we have to wait for elijah to come back because he left with with god and for a long time they were waiting for elijah to come back mm-hmm. and then the Messiah, right? Mm-hmm. And then it, he never came back. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus comes back, the the Hebrews were like, well, we're waiting for this other guy. Like, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. You know? Because God works in very mysterious ways. You know what I mean? Like you just said, electricity, it was probably like the second like uh, the Holy Ghost, manifestation yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And just like, Back in the day, like uh, Hebrew, like the Hebrews didn't understand that Jesus was the Messiah. He had to like prove it over and over and over by doing miracles and like going to the synagogues and talking to the rabbis and making them look like idiots. Mm-hmm. And they still didn't get it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just like Nietzsche said, like God is dead because. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Christians couldn't figure out how to how to love their own God, so they mm-hmm. killed him, crucified him. Right. So now, fast forwarding to like the internet, it's like, 
a beautiful platform where you can just like confess and anything. Mm -hmm. The internet knows what porn you look at. The internet knows how much money you make. The internet knows all the shit mm -hmm. about you. You're so honest to the internet. Right. The movies you like. That's everything. It's like a... It's a, listening to you. It's like a subconscious. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a... And well, I like, mean, a, a lot of New Agers compare it to like your shadow. The internet's like a shadow version of you. Right. Or your, I alter, mean, but it's, your alter ego. But it's... It's... it's 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 also being like sabotaged by a lot of like uh, people that want to use it for the, the the like the the wrong like uh, purposes. Right. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Like you can use a knife to like and be become a chef, or you can grab the knife and become a serial murder. Yeah. Serial murder. Right. <laughs> so like you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It's a sharp tool, but like. For a purpose, for good purposes, but it can also be a tool to create a lot of damage. Right. And I feel like it, it might be just a face, like, um, because you go on, yeah, I go on the internet and I find a lot of fucking cool shit, brother. Of course. You know what I mean? Like, I follow this this kid that's from like, um, he's from like. Kansas or something, but he's like a little mad scientist, and uh, he turns, uh, he buys like powerful lasers, like um, point, like lasers that to point at things, right? Right. And he uh, fucks with the engineering of it and turns it into a more powerful laser with mm -hmm. more like wattage, so he can like literally burn through things. Mm -hmm. And then he does like all this. He's like a American like kid like scientist, you know, mm -hmm. and then he made a death ray with a fucking you know the um, tattoo removal laser. Mm -hmm. Well, he grabbed that machine and turned it into a death ray. Wow. But then he powered it because it's pretty powerful when it hits your skin, you know. Mm -hmm. But he he powered it with like like I don't know like how much fucking uh, power he put into it, I forget. But it was like a death ray. And he burned right through a fucking refrigerator. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Some kid here in America. That's cool. Like, make this shit in his garage. A death ray. What mm -hmm. Tesla fucking invented. Right. So what I'm saying is, like, there, the internet is a fucking beautiful place. But a lot of people, or I don't know, entities want to use it to just like sabotage it. And like, instead of sharing information at the speed of light, you know what I mean? They want to use it to just spread like hateful things at the speed of light. Right. And it's just like, bro, are you, are you serious? Right. Like, I mean, I mean, now. yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that, that's what's, you know, strange about, um, You know, the whole political, the whole political spirit in our country right now is very strange, but I mean, um, it's very peculiar, but, you know, I like this one quote, I think it's by Helen Keller. It goes, no pessimist ever discovered the secret of the stars or sailed an uncharted land or opened a new doorway for the human spirit. Right. So I think when we have these conversations, we're trying to like get through the mud so we can actually have like a genuine cre yeah. creativity conversation about what yeah. actually like makes us like passionate and what drives our creativity. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of like went off track from my main point, but I was talking about um, uh, Chicago and about how like California Bunny how um, the first Playboy Mansion was in Chicago. Mm. And it was like this huge penthouse kind of thing, you know, this penthouse mansion type of thing. And Chicago was when they had their first headquarters and they had like, you know, a five-story building or something like that. And um, they had the first Playboy Club there and all of that. And I was talking about how back then it was just interesting how like the gentleman was a very sophisticated yet cultural man. And he wasn't like a kind of, um, 
you know, backwater, hipster, you know, fuck everybody. I'm just mm-hmm. going to go live in a tent in the middle of nowhere and right. do a bunch of LSD all day. Um, you know, it's just strange how different cultural phenomenons occur. Um, I mean, Terrence McKenna called it the archaic revival, which is where, like, we kind of went through the 50s of conventional conservatism or trad con, which is like, you know, traditional conservatism and uh, the whole aesthetic of Mad Men. And um, the archaic revival from McKenna's perspective was when to go back to archaic times. So archaic times in the sense of cultural art and basically people would get more tattoos, more piercings, rock mm. and roll, whatever. It would just we were trying to get back to like this very native kind of archaic revival of things. Mm. And I wonder if we're still in that archaic revival. So I, I think for me it's kind of funny because you know, we're kind of in a cold war with the archaic revival at the edge of the millennia as well as through a digital renaissance. So all these ideas I've always had, Mm -hmm. it's just, it was kind of impossible to like talk to anybody about them. So that's why I wrote like three books in like a year and a half. I wrote cybernetic goddess, sadistic fragrance in California Island to just get all my ideas into something that was beautiful, cool, awesome, and fun, you know, to read and enjoy. And um, so I'm feeling, you know, great about it because I haven't published a book in five years. So it was kind of good to like just three books off the gate, all these wild ideas I've been having for so long. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, uh, I bet you're learning a lot about yourself too, like traveling and like building stuff and doing what you do, yeah. your, your craftsmanship. Um, so yeah. what's kind of uh, on the horizon for you? And then we'll wrap up the show. Uh, on the horizon, uh, well, there's going to be a lot more work because of the the strike, like, is over. So there's a lot of, like, backed up work. Mm. So there will be, like, a lot of projects, like, coming up this year. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, you know, like, I'm excited to be part of all these projects. Coachella is happening pretty soon. And there's just like a bunch. Of, the summer like is gonna be busy, you know. Oh shit! So there's gonna dude, be dude. I can't more, even more think stories. about summer right now, bro. Yeah, but I, I kind of. I, I, is it windy or something? I think it's just the wind. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to do more local work. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like some of the local like studios in LA and shops, and. Um, just start like uh, easing down on the traveling because it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> I mean, it's fun and all, but like when you're like on the road constantly, it's, it's a whole different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but it should be a pretty exciting year with work and projects and whatnot. Okay, cool. Anything that you would want to personally do for your art? Um, well, Any lately I've mind? just been uh, painting on clothes. <laughs> right, your lip series, right? Yeah, I've been painting lips on jackets, shirts, stuff like that. It's kind of a, a, a little thing I've been doing uh, just to like kind of promote like love and uh, the human warmth of a kiss mm. you know like give me a kiss good night give me a kiss goodbye you know like the the, the magic of a kiss you know uh, uh, it's, it's it's so beautiful to feel like to to feel the the warmth of you know the breath of a kiss mm, okay you know what i mean like, i like it's, it it's, it's it's crazy like you don't not you don't have to like kiss everybody in the mouth but like you can kiss someone in the forehead you can kiss someone's hand you know like you can kiss someone's cheek you can kiss someone's neck like mm-hmm. back like 
but there is something magical about that. And um, I feel like a lot of people have been repressed from affection because of the decay of Western society. And why say it like that? <laughs> well, because that's exactly the response that you get from people that, like someone like me that's very like affectionate, they're just like, whoa, like, you know? Oh, okay. Like, sorry. What is it? Like, like I'm not, I'm not used to like this, this type of affection. Like, oh, okay. And it's just like, wait, the, what's wrong with you? No, they're cold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but it's just like when you, when you beat a dog, you know, like you beat it just as a puppy. Yeah. And then the dog like goes into like an owner that is, you know, wants to give love to the dog. The dog starts like, you know, he gets fussy. Right. Because he's not used to that. He's traumatized. So he yeah. wants, he, he's like used to the trauma, which is like beating. And then someone comes in and says like, come here, puppy. I love you. And it's like, whoa, what are you doing? Like, you're doing something wrong like that I'm not used to. Mm -hmm. What is that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it's just a very symbolic like meaning that I have um, uh, with the lips. Mm -hmm. And it's just to feel the, the human warmth again and, and that we need each other and, and we, we don't need to be like hating on each other or like beating each other up or yeah, you know what I mean? I hear you. It's, 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 it's time. It's time because <laughs> all this shit, all this hate, it's just not going to take us anywhere. It's yeah. just going to divide us. It's going to isolate everybody. And then you either grow or you die. Right. You know what I mean? That's also the same strategy for any like neo-capitalistic like business. Right. You either grow or die. <laughs> well, there's something within hate that is loving. You know what I mean? There's something that... I mean, you only hate things that you love. Exactly. There's something to that. Yeah. But and, it's, just, and, uh, it's, just, it's, a, it's that sad resentment. Like, like um, it, it's, it's an emotion. You know yeah. what I mean? That was never addressed. So then it just... It, it, it rots. Yeah. But the, the, the initial emotion was, was good. Right. And then it just turns into like this, you know, bad like feeling. Yeah. No, trust me. I, I, I get know. I get what you're saying. It's weird. I, well, get what you're saying. I think it's it's just time to just bypass all hate. Just be like, okay, you hate me, whatever. Like I'm just here, like I'll make great things with you, but <laughs> right. if you wanna go that route, like Right. What can I do? Well, you know, there, there's like stages of it, right? So it's like, yeah. if you're talking about love and all of that, you know, first it's appreciation. Mm -hmm. Someone appreciates you. And then the second is, the second is like a, a kind of a way to, of expectation. Mm -hmm. Now they expect what they appreciate. And then number three is entitlement. Now they're entitled to what they expect, to what they appreciated. And then before is resentment. Because if you don't fulfill their expectation or their entitlement, then they get resentful. Yeah, of course. Right? So it's, it's like one of those things that, like once you understand that, it can kind of clarify so much because it's like, you know, you pour so much love into someone, so much, you know, like simplicity or just honesty or fun or whatever the case and then over time, it's hard to grow to resent you. And you're like, like, like why? Like, what, well, what's this for? Like, what, what, what happened? And it's because, like, their entitlement is more higher than their appreciation or their expectations. Yeah. So instead of staying in the appreciation place, they start getting into the other places, mm -hmm. which is like, fucking unnecessary sometimes yeah you know especially it's a, yeah uh, it's it's a very touchy like formula but well it's just kind of a way to kind of see like well that's just the way it goes mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's just uh strange yeah. you know and I, I think men we love a little bit more deeper you know what i'm saying meaning yeah yeah a little bit more um we love with our eyes mm -hmm. it's where you love you for who you are kind of um a little bit you know yeah, but the, we, also, like, we also put a lot of time and effort into making things. Like, for example, like all the time and effort we put into like writing a book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you go and like travel, like 
you're like, like I said earlier, like at the edge of like existence to find something meaningful and then you find it and then you see how beautiful it is and you want to express it to other people. Mm -hmm. But that it's, you know, a lot of work, mm -hmm. mental work, like emotionally, like, you know, like mentally, like physically, like all these experiences that you put yourself through, you know, like when you went to Europe and you woke up like on a bench or whatever, yeah. with no money, no phone, <laughs> but you're like absorbing information, yeah, you know, and then turn it into content. Like, like that's, that's your story as a poet. Yeah. That's a lot of work. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah, it is. It is, man. Yeah. Like, it's not flipping else hamburgers. across the world might not be doing that, but it's also like working like 18 hours a day, like in a fucking oil rig. Right. And bring in like, you know, money to his kids and wife. Right. And that's just like another like type of like, you know, like hard work that, that we do or like men do. Mm -hmm. But it's sometimes it's not appreciated at all. But it's like even You're if speaking it's not, to even, the choir. Yeah, even if it's not appreciated, <laughs> then you're still going to do it. You're speaking to the choir, that's, man. That's just like what you got to do. That's right. what you were made for. Well, <laughs> let's, uh, let's end the show with a great quote by yeah. Emerson. It goes, If the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how would men believe and adore and preserve the many generations, the remembrance of the city of God, which had been shown to them? But every night comes out these ivories of beauty and light the universe within their astonishing smile. That's great to hear. Bravo. Bravo. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to Poetic Realms. Uh, Alejo, yeah. where they can find you. Yeah. Plasma, J-O-H, on Instagram. Okay. And then there's also Moi Creates okay. on Instagram. Okay. That's for the lips and like jackets and like art and clothes and all that stuff. You know. Alrighty. That's it. All right. And uh, thank you so much. And if you would like to check out one of my published books, uh, go to Brandon Via Senor Poet, the link in bio. And if you want to see my latest editorial, California Bunny, simply go to my Instagram and uh, I'll have all the art there. So thank you so much and good night.